G'day and welcome to the complete guide for Chef and Risk of Rain 2. Now, I am sorry, I'm going to keep saying this, but I just want to be really clear. The game as of current patch on the 31st of August 2024 is a buggy mess. And I do not recommend downloading the update or buying the DLC. But I did a poll on YouTube explaining my issues with this and around making guides despite this. And it was overwhelmingly in favor of still making guides. So here we are, the Chef Guide for Risk of Rain 2. Okay, with that established, let's dive into the abilities and specifically the passive of Chef. This is called Chef's Kiss and it makes enemies drop a little healing item when they die if you've hit them with two or more of your abilities. This is also why there are little symbols above the enemy's head that look like debuffs. This is to show you how many abilities you've hit the enemy with. And the more abilities you've hit them with, the bigger the healing from your healing item is. Not the most useful passive, but it's nice to keep in mind if you are on low health. Chef's primary is called Dice and it throws a cleaver out for 250% damage and when it comes back, it will do 370%. 75% damage. Now, this will be a majority of your long range damage, but I actually feel like this ability is incredibly lacking. It's got a limited amount of uses similar to Artifice's primary, and you need to pick again to bring it back instead of it coming back automatically. So even if you want to send out three in quick succession to an enemy that is far away, which you can't because if you spam click it, it will just recall the cleaver instantly with it only going a meter forward. I know some people like this and they think it's really interesting, but I cannot for the life of me understand it. Just make it go X amount of distance forward and come back straight away. Also, the cleaver will stay out in place and spin for a second or two, which you would initially think would do great damage if you've got an enemy to stand in it, but it only hits them once, so I have no clue why they coded it this way. That and the longer the run goes, the harder the cleaver is to see. It's incredibly small, and given that you need to double click to use it, it becomes increasingly hard to see where the hell it is. Anyway, definitely not a fan of this, but still the best range option you have consistently. But you gotta use what you gotta use. The secondary is called Seer, and it burns enemies for 600% damage and inflicts the burn debuff at an insane rate. It goes without saying that ignition tanks are obviously an amazing buff to this. It's worth noting that if you use Chef's special ability called Glaze before you sear an enemy, then the seer will do an extra 75% damage. This is honestly a bit underwhelming, but still it's useful to keep in mind and throw it out just for a little bit more damage. Okay, his utility is called Roll, and it's going to be the ability you honestly use the most, and it's super fun, I really like it. You can charge Roll up, but you can release it at any time, and it will do between 500 and 800% damage. The beauty of Roll is it's similar to Multi's Transport Mode in the sense that you can just tap it and you can take off at a much higher speed, so it makes traversal much, much easier. That, and it's going to be your main source of band procs. And unlike Multi's Transport Mode, you can hit the same enemy multiple times with the same ability. So if you have a blast shower, you can proc bands over and over and over again with one use of roll. Big, big fan of this ability. Okay, Chef now has two choices for his special ability, and one is a lot better than the other one, and I honestly think you'll be surprised at which one it is. His default special is called Glaze, and it fires seven globs of oil that deal 200% damage each, and applies slow and weaken. This is both an amazing source of AoE and single target. You can aim it so it spreads amongst a group of people, or aim it directly at one enemy's feet for a huge blast of damage. And as mentioned before, this is the ability that increases your seer damage, so always nice to throw that out after using Glaze. His alternate special is called Yes Chef, and it amplifies all of your other attacks for one use. It makes it so your primary shoots out a huge spread of cleavers in front of you, makes it so your secondary shoots several blue fireballs out on use before searing the enemies as well, and so your roll turns into a massive flurry of knives while scrolling through them. Now, that sounds awesome, right? Well, it kind of sucks. The cleavers have such a small hitbox that unless you are point blank with a large enemy, they mainly just miss the enemy. The fireballs have next to no AoE and do minimal damage, and the flurry of knives are cool if the enemy is stunned or stationary, but the main use of the roll is to roll through and get out instead of staying close to maximize the flurry. And when you charge through enemies with a flurry of knives, it knocks the enemies out of your range, so you can't even hit them with the knives. That, and the cooldown on Yes Chef is 15 seconds, which is insanely high for the very minimal benefit and the animation for it is weirdly long too. I just don't like it. You lose a big source of consistent AoE and damage of Glaze, but sometimes AoE and damage in the right circumstances with Yes Chef. I really, really recommend Glaze over Yes Chef. Okay, so let's talk playstyle. At his core, Chef is a melee character with his Glaze, Seer, and Roll. Obviously, you can use your primary for range, but as we discussed earlier, it's just an inconsistent and slow range option. Unfortunately, the need to click it a second time to bring it back just makes it too slow to be viable in the later stages. But the main secret, and I'm really seeing a pattern now with the DLC characters since they're all just a little bit weak, is to rotate through your abilities as much as possible to get the DPS as high as possible. 
This may sound obvious, but if you look back to people like Loader or Commando, for example, you can so easily fall back on just one of their attacks in the later stages, but that just isn't the case for the DLC characters and definitely not for Chef. I really recommend mobility and focus crystal on Chef. Sia taking you down a walking pace is clearly an issue, but the more speed you have, the safer you are, and obviously you're essentially always in focus crystal range. Also, it's very important to remember that you have your role as a band proc, but also as an escape mechanism if things get a bit too spicy. Do not underestimate this ability. Your role can be so much of your damage and your survivability all mixed into one. I honestly think it's the shining star of all his abilities. Alrighty, let's dive into the tier list, the thing that I know most people are waiting for. F tier and D tier do not have anything special to mention on these right now. Just know the best thing you can do for these is to recycle them or turn them into scrap. Obviously, there will be some very niche cases of a D tier, but honestly, never something you should be looking for on a run. Just Make them scrap, turn them into watches, move on. C tier, and honestly, these slide awfully close to the lower two tiers, except they will give you a use more often than not. Not the best use, but a use. Tougher times can be a great get out of jail card. Crowbars can be a nice multiplier played around, right? Queensland is a nice distraction, all nice things, but never the core of your chef run. Not bad though. Alrighty, B tier. We're starting to climb in the items to base your build around now. Never something to a mega send into, but stuff that will definitely supplement your run and help to keep you alive. Special note to Deathmark being insanely good on Chef, given that you have innate three debuffs. You have burn from your seer and slow and weaken from your glaze. One Krona bubble and your death mark is up and running. Super, super useful on Chef. And just to mention again, Guillotine is only this high because of current patch and elites spawn like crazy. But once they patch that, that is a straight D tier item. Do not get me confused. I am not a Guillotine defender. Okay, A tier of the items you want to always pick up and are generally always worth stacking. AoE is always such a game changer for Risk Rain 2 and there's a reason essentially all AoE is right here. That and stuff like Syringes and Shurikens are a great fix for your lack of range with the Chef. But yes, these items, pick them up all the time. You win. Easy. <laughs> and finally, the pinnacle of the tier list, S tier. These are always going to be the key to victory with your speed, damage, and damage reduction. Stack this as much as you can for the best chance of winning. A special note for Ignition Tank and Visions in this tier. Ignition Tank is obviously fantastic with your seer given how quick it stacks burn, and the Vision replacing your cleaver is honestly a godsend. Given how slow and hard to utilize your cleavers are, replacing with the Visions is amazing. It will make it slightly harder to use your passive, but honestly, the passive is pretty lackluster anyway. Visions of Heresy are a big win. For Chef. Okay, let's dive into the DLC items now. If you've seen my false sun guide, then honestly, this is going to be very similar. And by similar, I mean literally exactly the same. Unfortunately, the new DLC items don't have a lot to be desired for synergy, so this list stays fairly stagnant. But alas, F tier holds a single item, the unstable transmitter. TPing to a random location is bad. You must know what your surroundings are at all times, and being thrown to a random spot on a map is never a good thing. It will just get you killed. Do not recommend this item. In D tier, we have the knockback fin, because why do I ever want to knock enemies in the air? I mention this all the time. I don't know why. This is an item. Ant the shield, bolstering lantern, and noxious thorns suck because I do not want to take damage to deal damage. That is not a good idea. War bonds is a gallstone, but worse, and it's a red, which makes no sense to me, but apparently that's just a thing that they've done. And long standing shot is not a good item. I'm sorry I put it so high in the seeker video. I have learnt my lesson. <laughs> it is back where it belongs. All D tier straight doogie okay c tier brings us warped echo which again looking past the fact that makes mythics actually unkillable at times it can be useful luminous shot is good to keep in mind since you use your secondary so often but nothing that amazing prayer beads are a nice little boost but nothing to really build around growth nectar again can be really good but again it's just inconsistent to get going and runic lens is the most inconsistent proc item in the game but when it hits it hits but it just doesn't really hit. These are all pretty aggressively C tier items. Alrighty, B tier gives us the chronic expansion, which by itself isn't bad. If you are constantly shooting and fighting, which you are often doing with Chef, it's a pretty decent addition of damage, but with the FMP, it is literally infinite damage, but a good FMP build is very, very hard to come by. Chance styles can turn reds into yellows out of chance shrines. Again, very, very scarce, but very, very cool when it happens, so they're pretty useful. Electric Boomerang is sort of just there. I know it's doing stuff. I know it's hitting. I can't tell you. I've never noticed it does a lot, but I do know it as the proc chains and I do like the extra damage that it gives you. These are pretty consistent B tier items. I do like them, but they're never like something I'm ecstatic to see, essentially, is how I see these. Alrighty, A tier, moving on up now. Sales Star, once again, an amazing item. This doubles the first chest you open every stage 
And yes, again, that includes legendary chests. Just please maybe you have it. I have opened the wrong chest so many times and it works on equipment. So if you're like feeling a little bit down bad about equipment, you can get a double open on an equipment. And Seed of Life is a DO that is an equipment. I don't need to delve into that one. Extra life equals good. A tier good items. And once again, sitting alone at the top in S tier is the Sonorous Whispers. This item is insane. The more I think about it, the stupider it gets. It gives you items when you kill boss tier enemies. Not just TP bosses, boss tier enemies. So if a random boss enemy spawns late in a run, that will give you an extra enemy. And it adds a 15% chance for an elite to drop an item too. And given how common elites are right now, that's actually insane. Essentially, it turns on the artifact of sacrifice in just a normal run. It is amazing. This is S tier of S tier. <laughs> I love this item. And that's it. That's the Raymond Daniels Guide for Chef and Risk of Rain 2. But of course, let me know what you think. Am I right? Was I wrong? What would you change? I'm always happy to read the comments and see what you guys think. And of course, if you like the content, then make sure to subscribe. It helps me out a ton and it genuinely means the world to me. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I love you lots. I'll see you guys in the next guide. Love you. Bye. Mwah.